Hello everybody and welcome to another weekly update from uh, me, an Inkscape developer, uh, the user-focused Inkscape developer. Uh, first of all, I want to give a big shout out to all of my patrons this week. Thank you all very much for, con for your continued support. Um, and if you uh, like the work that I do on Inkscape, please consider subscribing. Um, you can subscribe to my pat pat patron in the link below. Um, also consider subscribing and sh sharing these videos. Uh, it, it really helps a lot to get the message out there that we can, uh, together, we can improve Inkscape um, users and developers together. So uh, what have I been up to this week? So uh, first of all, the uh, did some website fixes. The The person that's running the contest which ends tomorrow so thank you all so much for the amazing art artwork that's been submitted there um it's it, it, tim ha, who, who's been running the con contest this year has been doing an amazing job um i had to add the ability so you could edit comments um they also wanted to re uh, message all of the people that were joining teams so that they could manage their teams better so I had to add a feature that allowed an administrator only to very carefully uh, send a, a message to everybody who had joined a specific team. So say if you were a member of the Vectors team or you're, you're a member of the developers team, um, then the admin, only the administrator of that team could send out a uh, notification to everybody in that team. Um, this is mostly so that they can be notified that the, if the teams want to remove uh, everybody and then restart or they want to do something specific. Um, I fixed so getting getting onto Inkscape proper 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 a uh, bunch of bug fixes this week. I fixed this bug where if you try to open an SVG file from your from the from the rubbish bin, uh, what what Americans would call the trash can, the it would fail. But worse than that, it would then stop you from being able to reload Inkscape. So you would try to open Inkscape and it would just crash. Uh, not good. So I, I I didn't fix it so that you could open and open the actual trash can file. Uh, that's GTK upstream problem, which I did actually go to the GTK pro pro project and I talked to them on IRC uh, and and tried to figure out like if there was a way to open them and there just isn't. It's just a the way that they've thought about how the trash can works in in GNOME is not uh, is not compatible. But at least now Inkscape won't crash when it tr when it tries to open while there's a trash can item in the recent documents file list. Um, I, I fixed a bug that I created. It was my fault. Uh, when you would save a document, the text would disappear. So if you created a piece of flow text and then you saved it, the text would disappear. This this was related to the uh, creating a copy of the document while you were doing a save so that the, the, what happens is the te flow text gets converted from SVG 2.0 flow text to SVG 1.1 so it can be rendered in a web browser. So if you open up the document with flow text in a web browser, you end up with the text still visible. Um, I broke this because of the way it was trying to reference the original document. So I had to put in a, like a pretty, pretty deep fix actually for, for like making that original document still available. Uh, I fixed the extensions manager for Arch. Uh, some small fixes, actually. Uh, thank you very much for testing the extensions manager. The, the more tests that happen with 1.1, one, one, 1. 1, the more likely we are to figure out some of these issues. Uh, make sure that the extensions manager works when it's released. Um, I started uh, preparing the welcome screen. I did some edit edits to, to, to the welcome screen um, and I started organizing for the graphics reuse. This is where um, when the About Screen con contest finishes next week, uh, there'll be a vote and then the winner of that contest, uh, the, actually the, a few winners will be selected and then the, the community is its, uh, in, internally will select the actual final winner. But all of the non-winners are reused. Their graphics are, are, are used in different parts of the project. And in the past, what's happened is, um, for a lot of these uses, I have made the decision. So I've gone on and I've picked one that looks nice and is um, contextually appropriate for the kind of graphic, and um, and, I, and I've used it. I've reformatted it and put it in. But uh, this time round, 
didn't think it was appropriate for me to be making all of these decisions. So I've created a, an issue and I've tried, I've started organizing to, to say to teams like Vector's team and, and, and the developer's team, hey, these are, this is a decision that you, you, as a team, we need to make about which graphics we want to represent this particular place. Um, hopefully it'll share out the tasks and it'll also make people feel a bit more responsible. Also, it, these are just um, s small tasks that anybody could get involved with, right? So like any new contributor to Inkscape could quite easily take one of the graphics, um, reformat it into the, into the specified uh, boxes um, and suggest it for this particular reuse, which, which, you know, is great. I, I, I love to see artists reusing artwork and um, especially when we can use all of these beautiful, pieces of artwork. I mean, they, they are artworks uh, that have been submitted for the About screen. Um, so that'll that'll continue on. Um, I actually spent the, the vast majority of my programming time this week uh, fixing, refixing, refixing the the uh, filters. So this is, the, do, do you remember, do you remember if weeks ago when I fixed the um, the the way in which if you if you set a a drop shadow the drop shadow would be would clip off the edge of the box right so if you set a massive offset you would have to set this uh manually you'd have to set the clipping box um and it didn't automatically calculate anything and so back last year i i added an automatic calculation so that it would calculate where this box should clip properly so you didn't have to set anything and you could set a drop shadow just going to move the backlight um, you could set the drop shadow and it would be appropriate. The problem is the calculations that I was using uh, didn't take into, a into account the stroke, so like the line width and, uh, and anything like markers or any other um, properties on the, the object. So it was just on the geometric shape and it looked okay as long as you never set a stroke. But as soon as you started having um, other pro properties on objects, drop, drop, shadows and blurs and things would just clip off the edges like mad and, and in really subtle ways too and so i spent a lot of the week uh implementing a fix having uh mykov test it and then uh he'd, he'd come back and say oh it's broken again uh, in, in like in in this subtle way this is why it's really great to have testers because they can like really hammer at a problem and um and eventually i got a fix in that it's it's like calculates the correct thing at the correct time um, and uh, uses the, the, the right boxes to, in order to do it. So it looks good. I'm, I'm happy. 1.1 uh, should have a pretty comprehensive and um, much more improved calculation of these bo boxes now. Um, that was probably way more um, details than you, you wanted to hear, honestly. Um, uh, in terms of uh, user features, things that you'll actually see. Uh, there was a user experience bug. This is an issue with the way in which Inkscape is, is possible to be used with the uh, raster extension. So last year, again, I created a fe feature where you could uh, export raster images as JPEG or WebP or uh, optimized PNG. <clears throat> and the user experience bug basically said that how, how could you possibly guess what the extension is supposed to be based upon uh, you know, it, 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 the the interface literally doesn't tell you anything. It's just if you typed in the right extension on the file, it would send it to the extension and it would do the right thing. So instead, uh, what I did is I put it in, a, in in into the save as. When you click save as or export as, I think it says, it, uh, it has now a drop down, and you can select one of the extent one of the uh, raster extensions, and and it also this list provides you with a way to see what raster extensions are available, right? So uh, we can get more direct feedback from users, say if for instance, a particular operating system, this particular uh, raster extension doesn't work for whatever re re reason, we'll, we'll know now. Um, but this seems to be a much better flow. Uh, there's still an issue with win Windows. Uh, Windows has an entire section of code, which is uh, completely unique. It only happens on win Windows machines. So it looks like I'm going to have to work with a Windows developer to fix that specifically. Um, actually, just probably just a Windows tester to, to te test, test fixes. Um, I already have some notes from Patrick, who's another Inkscape developer, on the kinds of approaches that should be done there to make, to make that work. 
Um, but hopefully that should improve the, the user experience bug. Um, it, it, it may seem weird, like adding features features during the the feature freeze. Uh, but honestly, I consider a user experience bug to to be a bug. Um, and I think I've I've talked enough this week. Um, thank you all very much for watching these videos, and um, please subscribe and share. Thank you very much, and I will see you all next week.